Hello and welcome to Practical Knife Reviews. Today for you we're going to be doing a repeat review. Some of you may remember this knife. It was I think the first full review we did on the channel. The Schrade SCH-F51M. Very catchy name. It has another name which slips my mind right now so I'll just title it with that. But uh, we've used this quite a bit more since we did the last review and the last review being so early on ended up being like 31 minutes long. So we're going to do our, our typical run through with this now in case there were some of you that didn't watch it just because of the length of that review. First things to mention, this is a dramatically different grind than this knife came with. This was a incredibly thick edge. You can see it's a quarter inch thick. 1095 carbon steel but the geometry of the edge was also super thick where it couldn't really slice much of anything so I thin that way down and the other thing to note is that this so these are hex screws that are holding the micarta handle on uh, this hex screw broke uh, actually fairly early on and it came apart I tried to screw it back together, but it's stripped out. So what I had to do is take the whole handle apart, epoxy the whole thing together, and fill the inside of these hex screws with epoxy and just clamp them together so that this is only being held by stripped threads and a little bit of epoxy. So something that's worth mentioning is that this hex screw did break and the handles were able to, you know, spin around like a windmill. Okay, this is heavy, very, very heavy, uh, but it's got nice micarta, nicely textured, 1095 carbon steel, which I love, and many of you know that, quarter inch thick. This thing is stupidly heavy. One other thing to notice, the handle is pretty comfortable. It's a little bit blocky, but it's pretty comfortable. Your hand fits in there well. I have an average sized hand, I'd say, and it fits I've got a little bit of extra space in there but they've also got a finger choil up here for you to come up on which this is quite comfortable to hold on but the effect of having this big of a finger choil is you end up with more than an inch of unusable space on the blade here so the blade is only this long we'll give you the measurements inside the blade is only this long when the knife overall is this long so you have a very short cutting length in terms of how long the uh, blade is. This is what the sheath looks like. It's a uh, Velcro on sheath belt loop here. Uh, this clips on around and it comes with a diamond plate for sharpening and a little ferro rod. We'll use those in a second. But first let's get to the actual cutting. So first, do I have this sharp? It is, whoops, it is sharp. And especially considering how thick this steel is for it to slice that well, just goes to show how much I had to thin down the geometry because even when the edge was sharp before, it wouldn't have sliced like that. Let's see how it works on cardboard. Not super easy on that a little bit easier there oops don't want that to get wet because it'll oh. make it harder okay thanks this cut was not that bad i'm having to use quite a bit of force and that makes sense this is a quarter inch thick so even though the edge is very sharp as soon as you get into it you're having to push a quarter of inch of a quarter inch of steel through the cardboard. I'll hand that to you now too. Okay, now here's what this is really made for, what I've used it for a lot. Splitting stuff. It's a quarter inch thick, so it's a great wedge. This is not our usual baton, but I just grabbed this to use as a baton. So here we have pine, soft wood. And now you'll see what I mean about this finger choil being unreasonably large. Okay, so you've got what looks like this much of laid. This would be more than sufficient to chop through this. But if you consider that you have more than an inch of unsharpened spine, you're just barely big enough to baton through this. 
And if you turn it this way, you're not quite big enough to baton through this, even though it looks like you should have that much clearance. What do you think about that, Ma? Yeah, it's not uh, not a great design for trying to baton. But we'll give it a shot, even though this is gonna probably hurt my hand. This piece is not ideal for using as a baton board. Let me try the other side of that. As you can see, we're just ripping through it. Yeah, it works better. So this works quite good for batoning. I know that it looked like it wasn't, but that was just the batoning board, the baton itself, that is. You see, once you get into it, and I'm having a little bit of a problem to getting a good strike with this, but once you get a good strike and you get it into there, it splits it apart pretty easy. And we've got a little knot here at the bottom that we're going right through on this piece. So you can see right there. But in any case, the pine is able to be batoned quite easily and we went right through the knot. Okay, so that's pine. Now let's look at red oak and I grabbed a very awkward piece with a big knot right in the bottom. But again, it looks like you should have that much clearance to baton through it, but because of the, the unsharpened portion, you only have a tiny little bit if you go through that direction. So I'm very, uh, let's say, I don't wanna say unhappy, but I'm not exactly pleased with how large that is because you could have saved that space on the knife. Instead of having a knife that's this long, you could have saved that much space by eliminating the finger choil here uh, and just having sharpened blade in front. Anyway, the batoning is going quite well with this, and this one is going to be the tricky one because we're going to be going through the uh, going through the knot at the bottom here. But we went through it. I'll just split this and get some oak ready for feather sticking. Okay. So, where's one of my pieces of pine? There it is. Let's see how this works for feather sticking, again, with a dramatically reprofiled edge on this. So we'll start with the pine, which is a softwood. And as you can see, I am using the finger choil here because it's the only way for my hand to get anywhere near the blade. Uh, this is actually quite comfortable to hold down here, but you end up being so far away from the cutting, the cutting uh, portion of the blade, the sharpened portion of the blade, that you might as well use the finger choil, even though the rest of the handle's quite comfy on its own. But you can see I've got this really sharp and thinned down quite a bit. So even though this is a stupidly thick piece of 1095, Pretty easy. I, I'm not having to put a lot of force into it. And those are pretty decent feathers there. Okay, let's look at a piece of red oak. So this is the hardwood, uh, the hardest wood that we've got in our forest, as I always say. And you can see again, once I get the angle dialed in, not putting, oops, not putting much effort into this. Now the, the curls, the quality of the curls isn't quite as good on the oak here. Um, that's mostly me. It's just a little bit harder to get the angle when the wood is a little bit harder. It wants to skate a little bit more, but you can see I'm not putting a ton of effort into it. And those are acceptable curls. Now, if this was thinner, uh, it'd be even easier to uh, feather stick. But given how thick it is, I, ha I really had to thin down the profile as much as I could to get it to be able to slice like that. So next we're going to, uh, well, I guess we'll try the uh, ferro rod while we're out here, and then we'll give you the inside measurements in a little bit. So we'll stick this back in the sheath. I think I'm putting and it in you the wanted my two cents, right? Well, give, give your two cents while I get the uh <laughs> My two cents are, it off. doesn't come in as a knife when you order it, it comes in as a blunt metal object. Yeah, then you, you have to make a knife, you have to make a knife out of this. You can, there's enough metal here to make two knives out of it. You, honestly, you'd be probably better off taking that much 1095 and making two knives out of it. 
you have that hull portion, the unsharpened portion there, plus about half of the width of that to make another another knife. Anyway, here's the fire steel that comes with it. It has a striker on it. Let's see how it works. Works fairly well. Oops. Except when you don't get the angle right. We'll try the spine of this while we're at it. So this does have a 90 degree spine, but it's coated. So even with the coating, you can get some sparks though. It would spark a lot better if you had filed off that coating on there. But the coating is to prevent the 1095 from rusting quite as easily. Anyway, that'll be the uh, outdoor portion of this review and we'll take it inside in just a second. So we're back looking at the Schrade SCHF 51M, which I looked up the official name of it in between and it is the Frontier Fixed Blade. Let's move that cord out of the way. So this is the Schrade Frontier Fixed Blade SCHF 51M. Now again, this has been used quite a bit. When it comes in, this black coating is everywhere, but you can see it's come off right here, right on this uh, grind line. You can see some of the epoxy poking through that I had to epoxy the handles back on, and you can see, you might be able to see, uh, yeah, this side. This hex screw is flat. This hex screw is angled because it was broken and I had to just epoxy the things back together however they would go. You can see how thick that 1095 carbon steel is. And you can see, again, the sheath with the diamond plate, which I didn't give you a look at here, but that's diamond plate. Uh, it's like a medium grit, if I'm being quite honest. Uh, it's a lot coarser than the ones that I usually finish my knives on. And that fire steel. And uh, yeah, okay. Uh, the other thing to note, that this generally retails for $49.99. Which for a chunk of steel this big is not that bad. But there's some design flaws here that I'm, I'm not particularly fond of. Anyway, Mom, why don't you give your thoughts while I get this measurement going. This is kind of a big, ugly, thick, blunt object to me, but it does work well after you reprofile the blade for using the split wood. So it's 11 inches long. The blade's length, if you're measuring right to here, is five and a half inches long, but the cutting length is only four and three eighths inches long. So you've only got a four and three eighths inch long cutting at length of the blade, but a five and a half inch long blade and an 11 inch long knife. So an 11 inch long knife, to reiterate the point one more time, on an 11 inch knife, you only have four and three eighths of an inch of cutting length on here because they've got this more than one inch uh, deep uh, finger, finger choil. I guess I'll just show how thick it is again. I'm not sure that the measurement will come up, but it's right at a quarter inch, uh, which I've measured before. But you can see if I can get the angle right. It's right at a quarter inch. You can see you've got some jimping here, which is actually hidden, like recessed into the handle. So you can only just barely feel it right there. And if you're choked up on the finger choil, your finger is nowhere near that jimping. So that jimping is just kind of superfluous, if you ask me. Uh, I do like that there's a little shoulder hump here though, so that when you do choke up into the finger well, your thumb has uh, like a little ramp to rest on. So that's well thought out, but these are completely useless. The hex screw stripped and fell out and you've got more than an inch of blade length that is not a blade meaning that you've got this massively long knife with only this much cutting length. And, not to mention, it is heavy. <laughs> massively heavy. Which we're gonna see in just a second. Uh, Ma, talk while, while I get the measurements going. So 
Yeah, this this thing is a weapon just because the amount of steel, steel that's in it. Get these lights off of there so yep, no more glare. Okay, so we're looking in grams first. 426 grams, which is 15 ounces on the nose, just shy of a pound. Now, if you add the sheath into it, because you know, you'd be wearing this on your belt, although I would recommend wearing this on a pack if you're carrying it on you, you're looking at 1.56 ounces for the whole package or 611 grams. It's a stupidly heavy knife. Uh, during the summer, I was wearing it on my belt to just get a feel for it before I did the review of it. And I'm not joking when I say it was literally pulling my pant, my pants down with how heavy it was. Now, of course, my belt wasn't you know cinched down as tight as some belts maybe, but this is a boat anchor if there ever was one. Now for chopping, it's fine. It's got a lot of weight behind it. And if you watch in the first video that we did of this, we do some chopping on the video. It does fine because there's a lot of weight behind it. For batoning, it's good at splitting, but you you only have that much length to baton with, which is ridiculously short given that you have a blade that's this long. Now, on the other hand, if you had this grind extending all the way down to here, you'd have that much batoning area and that much slicing area. And I would actually be fully on board with this knife, really. But this is for me, and I know some people like finger choils. I don't mind finger choils. This finger choil is positioned and sized in a way that you lose a lot of functionality of the blade given how long this is. So pretty big design flaw there. And uh, yeah. Micarta, nicely textured. I, I do like the texture of the micarta. It's not slippery at all, even when it's wet. It's squared off pretty badly on the uh, on the edges here, so it's pretty sharp on the edges. I'll let my mom give it a squeeze so that she can comment on that. But overall, I like the micarta itself. I like how it looks, like how it feels, but the hex screw just stripped and it, it broke. So here, Ma, give that a squeeze and feel the weight, feel how the handle feels, put your finger into the finger well, give it a, another feel. Well, one of the things I would say is, even if you have a large hand, because I have a pretty large hand for a woman, I think that uh, the uh, grip, or you got the handle, is ridiculously long. It's not that bad for me. Yeah, I think, I think it's it could have been shortened well, compared you, to- Well, when you hold the knife, knife, she holds knives with a with a hammer grip like this so she doesn't use up very much space rather than how i think more people hold it which is to spread your fingers out a little bit so she's she's gripping like that so but with her I, hand her I, hand is like this on here whereas if i'm holding it i've got it like that i've got just a little bit of extra space and i don't have huge hands but what do you think about the the micarta's uh, like how rounded off and stuff it is. Yeah, actually, I mean, it, I think the handle is comfortable. It's, you know. You, you don't think that that's too sharp on that edge right there? No, no, I don't. Okay, that was one of my criticisms, but I guess my mom doesn't care. And how do you like how it feels with your finger and the finger choil? And and that's fine too. I said the, the handle is just to me a bit long and it could have been shortened up a half inch. What I think that they could have done <laughs> is and this is gonna, I, sorry, this video is getting long and the whole point of reshooting this was to make it shorter, but they could have lost this lanyard loop down here and put it up higher into here. Mm -hmm. And that would have been able to shorten the handle somewhat without losing anything. Similarly, they could have lost this or cut the choil into here somewhere. Yeah. And then you would have had that much more cutting space. So you could have had a shorter handle so and a probably, longer blade. That would have lightened it up significantly. Yeah, but even given the amount of steel that they have, you could have had a shorter handle and a longer blade. Oh, the other thing to mention is it probably came in at a pound. You took that much. <laughs> I, I took off. I this This is not at all what the grind was like before. It was literally like a splitting mall before. I, I really thinned it out like that. So it's a big chunk of 1095. I love 1095. It's got a lot going for it. It's got 1095. It's got a nice micarta. 
but it, it's a project knife. It's not a ready to use, fully ready knife. Anyway, we've got to end this because we're going to go too long. Any final thoughts, Ma? Nope, I think you covered it well. Okay, $50. It's up to you whether it's worth it or not. That's all I'm going to say on that. All right, until next time, this has been Practical Knife Reviews, and we'll see you again very soon.